Don't you love nice weather? I mean, everybody loves nice weather, especially avid kite flyers. As a kid, the big thing I remember growing up were gala kites. For about a buck fifty, you can get them by the gross. We used to get them at what was known as the Five and Dime, or respectively Woolworths. Made out of plastic and Delta style, they were very easy to fly. But today, if you take that same one and hold it up against a pro stunt Delta kite, it could still hold its own. You can tie a brig on the end of it, and it's still going to reach an altitude way over 400 feet and hold its position. That's the real cool thing about them. So I actually put a video together with a lot of footage of me flying a lot of the ones that I got on eBay, and they were surprisingly cheap, even though they were vintage. And I titled this video, The Weird Thing About Gala Kites. One thing to take into account is the kind of reel that you use. Now, there's the spool with the line spun around it, and for gala kites, they'd be made of cotton and a very, very thin gauge, and you'd usually have 200 to 400 feet, or maybe 500, maybe at the most. But then, you also have some that are specifically designed for more professional use. Take a look at this reel. This buddy of mine that I met while flying my kites at Davenport Park gave it to me, and he and another friend of his usually come there, they're drone and kite enthusiasts, and whenever they would see me there, we would just talk shop. Only, I really wasn't sure how much was on the line until I actually used it with one of mine. I was just assuming that it's about maybe two, three hundred feet, because a lot of what he would use was heavy duty, and the gauge was thick enough so it could withstand the stress and the tension for anything that can have that kind of a pull. As high end as the reel is, I found out how high up the kites could go. I mean, look at that. Yeah, that little red dot that you could barely make out in the middle of the sky, that's the kite. There had to be at least, I don't know, about 800 to 1,000 feet on this line. Keep in mind also that there's still a lot wrapped around the reel itself. You just don't see it. He probably just didn't know or didn't care. And the other thing I forgot to take into account is that he uses this reel with kites that you can literally hang glide with off a cliff. You do get turbulence, and they don't necessarily stay steady like that all the time. Sometimes you get pockets, or sometimes the wind will downshift. But that really doesn't matter, even if you have a lot of line out. I mean, if it gets stuck in a tree, just reel it back in, and then gently ease it out of the tree. As long as it's connected on the other end, you just pull gently and take your time. Just be patient. Aside from the weather conditions, or what you have, there's also where you go. One of my favorite places is Davenport Park. I mentioned it before, and it's something that's etched in my childhood memory because as a kid, we used to go as a family. I remember when my father or my uncle used to fly these things, and they used to get it at the end of the spool, and we'd be dumbfounded because whenever I flew these same kites, they get all torn up. I'd tie them on the end of my bike and try and let them fly, go in the backyard, get them stuck in a tree, and they get torn up, you know, because they're cheaply made. But... This is such a nice place to go because it's one of the few places where you can actually do this or maybe even fly a drone or RC plane, copter, or even a remote control car without getting bothered. Not many people go, and usually the people that do go adhere to the rules and they're not really very reckless or loud, and it's the perfect place to go to recharge your batteries. Now when you come to this park, there's a flag on a mast that you can't miss. It's the first indicator that you can take note of in terms of wind, the strength of it, and the direction it's traveling. To the left, there's another one on a mast at the foot of an estate that you can't miss as well. And if you look beyond those trees, you can't help but notice it. To the right, there's another one at a beach house right beyond a catering hall of sorts, and it's huge. And those are three distinct markers that can help you find the best spots to fly. I also really appreciate how easy these kites can be fixed. If you get a tear in the fabric, use packing tape. I used just that with this kite, which got ripped in half. The next day I took it out, I couldn't believe how high and steady it went. Another thing is the frame. It's hollow. So if one side or the other breaks, use, let's say, a wood rod. You can get them at art stores. They're very cheap. And if you get one thin enough, it'll fit right inside and it'll be as good as new. Now, today, the newer ones really aren't too bad. They're woven out of nylon. They're not made out of plastic anymore. And they have a glass fiber rod type structure for the frame. But because they flex with the wind, they don't really 
maintain a steady position. They tend to spiral a lot. But they're pretty fun, but just I suggest flying them no more than maybe about 100 feet. I don't necessarily consider myself that much of a weekend warrior, but I do like hobbies, you know, they define who you are. There's certain aspects of your personality that can come out with a hobby. I mean, that's also the reason why I like to fly drones. They're very fast, maneuverable, and they're very dynamic. But there's also something very, very tranquil and peaceful about kite flying that I guess I've just found recently. And the fact that I was able to get these kites on eBay is something too. I'm glad I was able to do that. I mean, the most I ever paid for any one of them was like 10, I don't know, 15 bucks. But maybe it's also something about the memories. Maybe it's something about where I'm flying them and the memories connected to that. I don't know, but what I really gained from this is just how peaceful and enjoyable it really is. Maybe I've come home.